Hello, my name is Jacob Jenser. I'm an intensive care doctor and I work for the Department of Cardiovascular Diseases here at the Mayo Clinic. And I'm here to discuss with you a upcoming research project uh, that I'm in charge of called the PEARL study. And PEARL is an acronym that stands for a randomized pilot clinical trial for early coronary angiography versus no early coronary angiography for post-cardiac arrest patients with no ST elevation on their EKG. And this number here is uh, the clinicaltrials.gov uh, registration number. Cardiac arrest is a common and serious medical problem that occurs when the heart suddenly stops or cannot pump enough blood to maintain a pulse. There are many causes of cardiac arrest and heart attack is one of the common causes. A heart attack is when one of the arteries that feeds blood to the heart closes suddenly. And uh, this is distinct from cardiac arrest, although both uh, may occur together. Cardiac arrest usually occurs in middle-aged and older adults, although it can occur at any age. Cardiac arrest is initially treated with uh, CPR or chest compressions, often with heart shocks to restart the heart and bring back the pulse. Once the pulse is back, standard treatment for cardiac arrest includes supporting the blood pressure and organ function, finding and treating the cause of cardiac arrest, and cooling the body to protect the brain. Good intensive care after cardiac arrest is important for survival, and with good care, uh, patients can have at least a 50-50 chance of surviving uh, once they reach the hospital. So why are we doing the PEARL study? Well, as I mentioned, heart attack is one of the most common causes of cardiac arrest in adults. Heart attack is often recognized by something called ST elevation on the uh, EKG or electrocardiogram, but not all heart attacks cause ST elevation. And so the electrocardiogram uh, may not recognize a heart attack in some patients. Coronary angiography, also known as heart catheterization or a heart cath for short, can identify and treat heart attack. Uh, and, but unfortunately, doctors still don't know how to best identify patients who need a cath after cardiac arrest. We do believe that most patients need a cath after cardiac arrest to evaluate their heart arteries, but the timing of when to do this procedure is unclear. We have seen from studies in uh, other patients that patients who have a heart cath after cardiac arrest do appear to do better and may be less likely to die. What's not clear is whether this is because the heart cath procedure itself is beneficial or whether patients who are less likely to die are more likely to undergo the heart cath procedure. We do know that many patients who have one of a heart cath procedure do not actually have a significant heart artery blockage, although many do. And we estimate that only one out of every three or four patients who would be eligible for the PEARL study actually has a blocked heart artery that needs to be fixed at the time of heart cath. Now, heart cath is an, is an invasive procedure and a number of complications can occur occasionally, although it is generally considered a safe procedure. Unfortunately, we believe that complications are more common in patients who undergo an urgent procedure. So most studies do show benefits of performing a cath procedure within up to 12 to 24 hours after cardiac arrest. But it's not clear if performing the cath procedure very early, urgently within two hours, has an added benefit. We do not believe that the cath procedure is beneficial in patients who don't have a blocked heart artery or heart attack or who do not have a vessel opened at the time of the heart cath procedure. And it's true that some studies have actually failed to show any benefit of performing an early heart cath procedure after cardiac arrest. And because of this uncertainty between different studies in the medical literature, this leaves room for medical research to help improve our ability to care for patients after cardiac arrest. Now we know that an early cath has the potential to identify heart artery blockages earlier, which if we fix them could prevent further heart damage from a heart attack if one is present. We believe there are higher risk of complications from an early cath procedure, but based on the studies that we've done up to this point, we believe that the early heart cath procedure might reduce the risk of death, although most likely this only occurs in patients with a heart artery blockage that is fixed at the time of the heart cath procedure. 
later cath has an advantage of allowing us to stabilize the patient early, which may reduce the progression of organ damage, which is a common problem after cardiac arrest. It gives us the opportunity to find other causes of cardiac arrest besides heart attack in some patients. And in these patients, we may be able to avoid the invasive heart cath procedure if another cause of cardiac arrest is identified. In addition, we expect that there would be a lower risk of complications from the cath procedure itself. The current standard of care within the Mayo Clinic includes a heart cath procedure for most patients with cardiac arrest, but the timing is not specified and is left at the discretion of the treating physician. We believe that there are clear benefits of an urgent cath in patients with a suspected heart attack, for instance, those patients who have ST elevation on their electrocardiogram, and also in unstable patients who have evidence of shock or are, have had a recurrent uh, arrhythmia causing another cardiac arrest. And because we believe these patients benefit from a heart cath procedure done urgently, we are specifically excluding them from the PEARL study. But it is not known if stable patients without a suspected heart attack whose EKG does not show evidence of ST elevation really need or benefit from an urgent cath procedure. And for this reason, we believe that both arms of the PEARL study, which I'm going to describe to you shortly, are within the current standard of acceptable medical care. So what is the PEARL study? The PEARL study is a randomized study of coronary angiography timing after cardiac arrest in stable patients without an obvious heart attack on EKG. The assumption here is that all patients who are enrolled in PEARL will undergo a heart cath procedure unless there's a compelling reason not to. And the timing is what we are testing scientifically. The two groups are described below. Group one uh, will have all patients receive an urgent coronary angiogram within two hours of hospital arrival. Those patients in group two will receive a coronary angiogram after at least six hours of medical stabilization in the intensive care unit. It's possible that a few patients in the second group may not need a heart cath procedure and therefore might not undergo one, per predominantly if an alternative cause of cardiac arrest is identified and treated. Pearl study will enroll patients for approximately two years. Uh, in addition, patients who are enrolled will be followed for uh, seven months and our, the aim of this study across all the study sites is to enroll a total of 240 adult patients with cardiac arrest without a known specific etiology. Um, we're not including uh, children, we're not including pregnant women or uh, prisoners because these are um, at-risk groups. Patients uh, in the parole study at Mayo can be enrolled from anywhere within the Mayo Clinic Health System, although there are some logistical constraints that are taken into account. The PEARL study is run by the University of Arizona, and it's part of a group of several medical centers, including the Mayo Clinic. Carl Kern is the principal investigator at the University of Arizona. He is a world-recognized uh, expert in cardiac arrest research. Uh, again, I am Dr. Jacob Jenser, and I am the local investigator here at Mayo. Cardiac arrest is also my uh, area of expertise. The PEARL study is paid for by a grant from the Arizona Biomedical Research Commission, which is a nonprofit organization. Uh, the Pearl study is not funded by a drug company and does not have any specific financial ties to industry. So how do we identify patients for the Pearl study? Well, all, all adult patients who have been resuscitated from a cardiac arrest within the range of the Mayo One helicopter will be screened. And pa but patients will not be considered eligible if they're unstable or if their EKG shows definite evidence of a heart attack, if they're children, pregnant, or a prisoner, if they have an obvious non-cardiac cause of cardiac arrest, uh, or if they're wearing an opt-out wristband. And I'm gonna go into the details of the opt-out wristband a little bit later. So who is included in the PEARL study? Patients who have been successfully resuscitated, meaning they now have a pulse after cardiac arrest, can potentially be considered. As I have said, patients who are unstable or have a suspected heart attack will be excluded because we feel these patients should receive an urgent heart cath procedure and we do not think that it is appropriate to wait uh, to randomize them. Other patients who are stable will be evaluated for the PEARL trial inclusion and if they're eligible, 
they'll be randomized, which means that the study group is assigned randomly, such as by the flip of a coin, and patients are treated according to this randomized study group assignment. All patients in the Pearl study will be treated here at uh, St. Mary's Mayo Clinic Hospital in the cardiac intensive care unit, which is the four Mary Bride DE unit, which is where we typically care for these patients already. As I mentioned before, the two study groups here in Pearl are the urgent coronary angiography group in which patients will be taken directly to the cath lab um, for a coronary angiogram within two hours. Usually they will go there directly from the emergency room. And the second group is the delayed coronary angiography group in which patients are taken directly to the intensive care unit for medical stabilization for at least six hours. And coronary angiography will be performed after six hours in all of these patients unless there is a very specific reason uh, why either it is not indicated um, and of course, if a patient becomes unstable or shows uh, signs that a heart attack is present, then they would uh, have an urgent coronary angiogram be performed under that circumstance, even if they were randomized to the delayed group. All other aspects of post-arrest care will be performed similarly in both groups per our usual standard. And the only real difference between the two groups is when they undergo the coronary angiogram procedure. In graphic form, the Pearl Study Protocol starts with a resuscitated cardiac arrest patient. They are then evaluated by an experienced cardiologist who has knowledge of care for patients with cardiac arrest. If that doctor deems the patient to be unstable, they will not be included in the study, and they will be treated according to best clinical judgment. If the patient is stable, we will then evaluate their electrocardiogram and look for evidence of a heart attack, such as ST elevation. If they have that, they will be excluded. If the patient is stable with no evidence of a heart attack on their electrocardiogram, then they will be randomized to either, the, to either undergo immediate coronary angiography uh, within 120 minutes or two hours of hospital arrival, which essentially means we will try and perform this procedure as soon as it's reasonably possible, or they will be randomized to stabilization in an intensive care unit for at least six hours, after which they're uh, expected to undergo a coronary angiogram unless there is a specific reason why it is not believed to be indicated. We believe patient that there are risks and benefits in both groups, and we think that these are reasonably well balanced, or else we wouldn't think it was appropriate to perform this study. The risks in the early cath group involve performing the heart cath procedure before the patient is fully stabilized, which might mean uh, that they might have a uh, higher risk of organ injury. We believe that urgent procedures uh, have higher risk of complications. It is also possible that we will perform cath procedures in some patients who are unlikely to benefit. The benefits of uh, being in the early cath group would be the ability to identify and treat a heart attack earlier if one is present. And as I discussed before, some studies have suggested benefits of early catheterization. We believe that the risks of being in the late cath group include potential for delayed diagnosis and treatment of a heart attack if one is present, and the benefits include performing the cath procedure after patients are fully stabilized. We believe this will lead to a lower risk of complications from the procedure, and there is a chance that a few patients may uh, avoid the heart cath procedure if an alternative cause of cardiac arrest is performed. The real question here is whether performing a procedure in all patients is appropriate if only approximately one in every three or four of them are likely to benefit. And because that is an unanswered question, we feel that these risks and benefits are balanced appropriately to perform this research study. The really complex part of the Pearl study is related to consent. Most patients who have suffered a cardiac arrest are in a coma, meaning that they're not awake due to a brain injury immediately after resuscitation. But with good intensive care, many of these patients can still wake up, as many as 50% or more in some circumstances. But unfortunately, patients who are in a coma are not awake and therefore cannot be consented directly for research studies. And as a general rule, whenever we're performing medical research, we always want to get direct consent from the patient whenever possible. But for urgent research studies, like the Pearl study, um, it is not even necessarily possible to get consent from the next of kin. Um, for instance, they may not be available, may not be able to be located in a timely fashion, or they may 
be too upset with the uh, acute illness of their loved one to be able to discuss research uh, project. So for this reason, the Pearl trial is going to be performed under something called exception from informed consent. And this is a very, very special FDA regulated process uh, that has actually been uh, evaluated and approved at the University of Arizona already, but must be evaluated and approved at each, lo at each uh, local study center. And what exception from informed consent means is that under these exceptional circumstances that I'm describing, patients can be included in a study. They can also be randomized and treated before informed consent is obtained. And our expectation is that most patients of this type with cardiac arrest will not have direct consent before study enrollment. This type of a process is only used for emergency research studies where urgent treatment must be considered. And there are a number of very specific criteria that must be met, and I believe that the Pearl study has met these criteria, and that is, I believe, approved by the FDA at the University of Arizona site. Our concern is that it would not be possible to perform the heart cath procedure early enough in most comatose patients for the Pearl trial uh, without using this exception from informed consent process. That being said, before a patient is included and randomized, we make every effort to contact and obtain consent from the patient's legal representative or next of kin. But if we cannot obtain, contact a legal representative or next of kin in a timely manner, the patient can still be enrolled under the exception from informed consent. As soon as possible, we do seek informed consent directly from each patient once they are awake and able to make a decision about remaining in the study. Most often, we'll be able to uh, contact one of their legal representatives prior to this, and we will actually obtain consent from both parties if possible. But the patient will already have been randomized and treated as part of the study protocol if they're initially comatose and included under exception from informed consent. And if this happens, either the patient or their legal representative may decide to withdraw them from the study, which would mean that no new information about the patient will be obtained, we will continue to provide high quality care for the patient and there's no penalty to them in any way from choosing to withdraw from the study. But information that's already been collected in, by the study uh, prior to their decision to withdraw can be included for research purposes uh, after it has been made anonymous. So what if a patient does not want to participate in the Pearl study? So any patient or any person in the community who does not want to be included in the Pearl study in the event that they're unfortunate enough to suffer a cardiac arrest can receive an opt-out wristband free of charge. And wearing an opt-out wristband is the same as not giving consent. If you want to obtain a free opt-out wristband, which we will uh, mail to your house if, if that's your preference, uh, please call this number, which is area code 507. 538-7178, or you can email us directly. We have a dedicated email address, pearlstudy at mayo.edu. We will not enroll any patient who is wearing an opt-out wristband at the time of screening, and this actually includes patients who are wearing opt-out wristbands for other similar exception from informed consent studies, as Mayo uh, has other studies that are, uh, that are studying different disease processes under the same uh, type of a protocol. Unfortunately, if a person has an opt-out wristband but is not wearing it at the time of screening, uh, then they can still be enrolled because we would obviously not be able to know that they had opted out. For more information, we have a dedicated study website, www.mayoclinic.org slash study, and this has uh, various educational materials as well as links to other Pearl study related uh, websites. Uh, for more information, you can contact me directly. I, again, I'm Jacob Jenser, and this is my office phone. But the best way is actually to contact us via this dedicated uh, study email address. Again, pearlstudy at mayo.edu. You can give us questions, comments, feedback, or to request an opt-out wristband. If, uh, you can also call the, um, the same phone number if you have comments or questions or concerns, and we are happy to address those. The most important thing from my standpoint as a clinical researcher uh, who is considering this study is to ensure that the community 
does not have any major concerns that would make the study inappropriate. Uh, and I encourage you to please do not hesitate to contact us if there are any concerns that we should address. If the community does not feel that this study would be appropriate to perform locally, then we would not go ahead with the study under those circumstances. I really appreciate your taking the time to listen to me today. Thank you. Because this is a Mayo study, mm -hmm. patients coming to Mayo for treatment, and yep. they say they're comatose. What if they called that Mayo number or emailed the Pearl study and said, I want to opt out? Wouldn't that be able to be flagged in their medical record, like a allergy or? That's actually true, and I think that um, that's actually one of the things that we're going to do that I probably should have mentioned um, is where we are going to keep a database of people who have requested an opt-out band. Um, people can obviously do it anonymously, but if they say, I'm whoever and I want to opt out, we're going to keep a list of those patients. We're actually going to check that as well. So thank you for bringing that up. I, right. that, that is true. We have that. We're going to have that process. I just unfortunately forgot to mention it. Okay. Do you have one more then? Absolutely. <laughs> um, would this have any effect on the health of a patient by delaying the catheterization, other than the risks that you mentioned, would it not be in the best interest of the patient to wait? So that's a good question. Unfortunately, we don't know. So I didn't go into all the complications. One of the concerns is that when you do the heart cath procedure, the material used to take the pictures can be toxic to the kidneys in particular. And so if somebody's body is unstable, they're in shock, then that likelihood of a kidney injury is higher. And so if you delay and you stabilize the person, um, then that risk should be lower. I think that if the person doesn't have a blocked heart artery, then I don't really believe that the heart cath procedure will help them. In essence, you're playing the odds. You're saying, we know that even without an abnormal EKG, as many as one in every three or four people might have a closed off artery. So then you have to, what we're trying to figure out is whether performing a heart cath on all those people just to capture that important minority is beneficial overall, or whether it's reasonable to wait because if the person might potentially be protected from having a uh, complication by waiting, and that's the risks and benefits we're trying to understand. And the follow-up for the seven months, what does that mean? Um, it's basically, we want to have a six-month follow-up, and there's a window for that. For so them to come back. Yeah. So we make sure that they get good follow-up, which is, ironically, one of the limitations of current cardiac arrest care is we don't have a good protocol for following patients up. So although I didn't specifically talk about it, one of the advantages of being in this study is that um, we will we have a, a regimented follow-up protocol, which might be a little bit more rigorous than some people currently get. I think that's an area of improvement for our health system that I'm working on, um, and I'm probably going to mirror what's done for this study as a potential standard of care for our patients.